um, readers left for tonight, um, both who have been reading at our events before um, last month. Um, next up is Allison Ripple. I'll do two, and this first one is about the denial phase. Or no, not denial, bargaining. I always get those confused. I don't know why. <laughs> Probably because they happen so close together. Mm -hmm. uh, this is about the bargaining phase of grief. Plans for avoiding the inevitable. Declare bankruptcy. Kiss you with passion again. Never feel suspicious. Never try to learn the truth. Get a new job, one that pays well. Don't hate it, don't complain. Cook dinner every night. Look the other way when you're with her. Mm -hmm. Exercise twice a day. Enjoy sex with you again. Don't accuse you of lying. Don't be angry when I learn you've been lying. Feel grateful for your lies. Do not make you talk to my mother again. Do not ask you to do chores. Stop having insomnia. Smile. Stop worrying. Surrender, my own lovers. Fortunately, I didn't do any of that. It was a phase. <laughs> Spoiler alert, it all worked out. Um, this one, I um, was working on the 30-30 uh, project for Tupelo Press, where you basically write a poem a day and get people to sponsor you. And somebody I never knew, I never met, donated a good chunk of money in my name, and I said, well, you can tell me what to write for the last day. And he told me to write a poem that would motivate a mutual friend of ours to finish writing her book. And I don't write poems about writing poetry. And I knew who this person was. And I was really angry at her at the time. So I was like, why do I have to do this? But I did, because I said I would. Uh, so this is called Rules for Finishing a Manuscript. Mm -hmm. The empty page only looks overwhelming because it is full of potential energy. You are storing old notebooks of words that went nowhere. Let them go. Burn them, use the ash to fertilize your garden so they might give life to something. You must be like the snake, shedding old skin, leaving it behind to decay. You must let go of what your family will think, which is more difficult than burning your work. If you believe your doubters are right, they have already won. You must be like the magnolia tree, unashamed to take up space, extending your reach so, so that you might bloom. Ritual helps, but routine can suffocate. Every poet needs a different proportion of chaos and order. Tinker with a clean closet or mail left out on the table. Keep track of your finances, even if you don't want to know. <laughs> Ignorance is the worst form of blockage and denial the second. You must be honest with yourself, even when you are lying on the page. You must be as patient and persistent as the ivy that winds its way along a chain link fence. You do not need a room of your own or the perfect chair or expensive pens. Remember that your work is everywhere. Write drafts and flowers spilled on the countertop in fogged mirrors, in toothpaste, on the bathroom sink. You must be like the blue jay who flies off with a pecan, braces it between fence posts, and slams his beak into the shell to free the meat 